Steven Seagal has surprised the world with his unique and secret techniques such as this, I might do this, this, this and this it. that is showed in Jesse's new video, I Spent 24 Hours with Steven Seagal. First of all, hats off to Jesse for the amazing video. Watching the video, one of the most important keywords was Uraden, which Steven Seagal expressed as But most of the real what we call Uraden, uh -huh. we kept secret, you know, mm -hmm. until now. And later elaborated by Jesse as it Turns out, Sensei Seagal had mastered a secret style of Jujutsu while residing in Japan. However, being a native Japanese speaker and a Japanese Karate Sensei here in Japan, this word got me thinking. Does he really know what he's talking about? Uraden is not a secret jujutsu style, and there's a better word to describe what he's trying to say. So let me guide you through the Japanese martial art history to elaborate on their comments so that you can accurately understand this secret concept. Hi guys, I'm Yusuke, a karate coach here in Japan, and on this channel of Karate Dojo Waku, we cover karate tutorial videos, uh, historical videos, uh, reaction videos, and everything, the entertainment videos related to martial arts. So make sure you check it out uh, by subscribing to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit complicated, so here is the table of contents. It's in the timestamp as well, so please refer to it if you need to. Let's get started. Kobudo is not Okinawa. I think after watching Jesse's video on Steven Seagal, a lot of you were excited and fascinated by the mysterious and this secret concept of the Uraden that he was trying to represent. To accurately understand what he's trying to say here, we must first understand the word Kobudo, which is also a super misunderstood word. What comes to your mind when you think of the word Kobudo? Bow? Nunchucks? Weapons? I think a lot of you first had this keyword in your mind. Okinawa, right? However, I must first clear up your mind on this concept. Kobudo is not a weapon style in Okinawa. Let me say it one more time. Kobudo is not a weapon style in Okinawa. This is not my opinion, this is a fact. According to the Japanese dictionary, Kobudo is referred to as any Japanese martial arts style that was structured before 1868. Why 1868, right? This year is actually crucial when talking about Japanese martial art, and some even claim that martial art in Japan has died after this turning point. Let me tell you a little bit more about the story. Meiji Restoration The Meiji Restoration is a political revolution that happened in 1868 in Japan. It brought about the final demise of the Tokugawa military government and returned control of the country to direct imperial rule under the emperor. In a wider context, however, this was an era of major political, economic, and social change that brought about the modernization and westernization of our country, Japan. Well, why am I talking about this all of a sudden? Well, this had a huge impact from a martial art context as well. Four things mainly happened. Number one, sword abolishment edict. Number two, abolition of the Han system. Number three, introduction to Western weapons. And number four, destruction of the hierarchical system. Let me start off with the first one. Number one, the sword abolishment edict. In 1876, up to that point, samurais were allowed to have the sword right beside them at all times. And when I say all times, they put them to the side when they slept, but everything else, they kept it right on the belt. And this was for them to basically show that they are a samurai and that the weapon would keep the area safe because they will be the eyes of the samurai. However, from that point on, swords or katanas were prohibited from being carried by the normal citizens. This, what it means for the martial art is that samurais could not even practice anymore. This had a huge influence because now the art would not evolve. Abolition of the Han system. What is a Han, right? Basically, before the Meiji Restoration, Japan was split into 266, some claim 65, but around that number of Hans, or basically states uh, in the modern term. There were these small, basically small countries within Japan that had their own currency, their language, well, now we call it a dialect, but it was very different back then. Uh, their language, currency, the government, and an army. And who consisted the army? Well, the samurais. The samurais of that area was employed by the Han, by the Han government in order to protect the area. However, because the Han was abolished, there were no more Han anymore, basically the samurais lost their employer. Now they can't get feed just by training. So what, what are they going to do now, the samurais? Well, now they have to work. 
they don't have the time to train and to dedicate their life into doing martial arts. And imagine or not, that had a huge impact, right? Introduction to Western Weapons From 1639 to 1853, Japan had its borders completely closed, separating themselves from the outside world. Some of you might have known this as Sakoku in Japanese terms. What happened after the Meiji Restoration was that the borders opened, allowing Japan to be exposed to various Western modern weapons. Therefore, the traditional ways of fighting with a katana at the side did not really have that much respect anymore. Therefore, it had a negative effect on the development of martial art as a whole. Number four, destruction of the hierarchical system. Until the Meiji Restoration, Japan had a clear social hierarchical system, which puts shi, the bushis, the, west, the, the samurais, at the top. However, because the hierarchical system was all destroyed now, it is a positive thing as a society, but as a martial art, now the samurais are not respected. They don't, have the, they don't get the leisure to keep on practicing martial arts. As a result, the development slowed down a lot. And as you can see, because of these four events, the martial art culture in Japan has hit a peak point during the Meiji Restoration. The Meiji Restoration acts as a turning point in the Japanese martial art. Everything before the Meiji Restoration is described as Kobudo, the ancient arts, and everything after that is described as Budo or Gendai Budo, which translates to the modern day martial art. And it puts a lot more emphasis on the Do, the way of doing things. So, the way of the hand, karate, the way of the lock, judo, and this con the cultural aspect um, of budo came into play after the Meiji Restoration. And in a lot more recent years, the aspect of competition has been added on. So there is a clear cut, clear line between the Meiji Restoration before and after kobudo and budo. So kobudo, as you can see, stands for that. Okinawan arts versus Japanese arts. So why did I say that Kobudo is not an Okinawan weapon style? This relates to when Okinawa joined Japan. Okinawa joined Japan after the Meiji Restoration. And like I mentioned before, everything before the Meiji Restoration is described as Kobudo. Therefore, the Okinawan arts cannot be measured or valued um, with the same scope as the Japanese arts. The weapon styles, the weapon practices, the weapon like the nunchaks, uh, size, and everything like that is usually referred to as Ryukyu Kobudo. Ryukyu is the kingdom name before Okinawa. This signifies that we can't really have Ryukyu Kobudo and Kobudo as a merge, but it's a separate thing. Understand Uraden correctly. So now that you know the correct perception of Kobudo, let's take it back to that Uraden that Steven Seagal was talking about in the video. Before the Meiji Restoration, during the Kobudo periods, there are said to be eight different types of martial arts within the so-called Kobudo, which is an umbrella term. The eight styles or the eight martial arts styles were Jujutsu, Kenjutsu, Iaijutsu or Batojutsu in other words, Sojutsu, Jojutsu, Naginata Jutsu, Taijutsu, and Hojutsu. Uh, let me explain each of them. Jujutsu, I think a lot of you guys know, it is the locking and the grappling art. Kenjutsu, Kenjutsu directly refers to the sword jutsu, the sword techniques. The common scenario that people practice this was on the battlefield. So the, the sword is already drawn out from the saya, from the case, the, the sword case. They would have the sword and they would be really fighting each other. However, Iaijutsu, uh, compared to Kenjutsu, if you see a poor translation, they are both translated as sword uh, art. However, Iaijutsu is when the sword is within. It starts from a situation when the sword is within the case. Therefore, it is more for the environment where you have the katana on the side, however, you're not at a battlefield. Let's say you're just walking on the street, or let's say you are just talking with somebody. You have, to be a, you have to be really in control of the sword so you can draw it out anytime and to react to whatever the situation is around you. So that is Iaido. Sojutsu is the way of the spear. Jōjutsu, Jō is a slightly shorter bow. It's not really a bow that's so long. It's a bit shorter and people used it as a weapon before. Naginata jutsu. Naginata is a super long bow and a blade attached at the end. So. A lot of the females uh, were able to use the naginata. It wasn't really a men's uh, weapon. Taijutsu, I guess if you watch Naruto, Taijutsu is one of the, the, the rock leaves, right? Um, 
techniques. A taijutsu is, is also an umbrella term for any physical techniques that people did. So a lot of striking mainly. And hojutsu is a shooting technique. So basically for guns. You didn't really expect guns to be within the kobudo um, category, right? And stretching across these eight different types of martial arts, in total, there were 1400 different styles of that martial art. So, can you believe it? Like, if you just count karate, in karate, I think there's like 50, maybe 100 at most of styles worldwide. However, at one period in Japan, there were 1400 different styles of Kenjutsu, Iaijutsu, Bohojutsu. Like, what a great year for us, right? And within each of the style, there were the Uraden, the secret techniques. Uraden basically is a super high level technique that only the best of the best of the style can learn. So it does not mean a specific um, Jujutsu style, or it doesn't really um, point to a specific skill that a certain skill, a certain style had. It was just a general term to say the high level um, techniques that some were able to acquire. And as I was doing the research, the word uraden is not a really common word to use here. Uh, some other common words were hiden, secret te techniques being taught, gokui, the ultimate technique, and okugi, which is like a deep um, technique. Yeah, here's an example of gokui from Tenshin Shoden Katori Shinto Ryu style of the Naginata Jutsu, the long bow and then the blade at the end. Steven Seagal also mentioned in the video that the techniques comes from the sword. I think he um, described it as like these, right? Like the sword block comes into the block like this. Um, other Aikido movements like this onto the wrist coming from the sword. I can somewhat agree to that. However, um, I think a lot of you understood that as most Japanese like modern techniques that you see today is derived from the sword. I think that's a little bit too much to say. Simply because, like I mentioned, there were eight different martial arts within the Kobudo, the old ancient um, martial art in Japan, right? Um, and the one that uses a sword is only Iaijutsu and Kenjutsu. Everything else, like I mentioned, was like spears, jo, short bow, um, even guns, right? So you, if you ignore that and just say that everything derives from the sword, that's a little bit too much to say. I'm sure it might have been the majority of the influence, However, it's too much to say that everything comes from the sword. I'm beginning my journey into true Kobudo. Okay, on to the last part of this video. I'm beginning my journey into true Kobudo. Like I mentioned, Kobudo is a Japanese ancient uh, martial arts techniques that was here in Japan before the 1868, before the Meiji Restoration. Therefore, it is extremely hard, even domestically in Japan, to find the correct sensei that can teach you this. However, there are two senseis um, that are very famous in Japan within the Kobudo world. I cannot tell you which one I'm going under because the system is very secretive. Um, however, as I gain trust from the sensei and I, as I gain credit and experience, I am more than happy to share a little by little on this channel as well. So if you're interested in the real Kobudo, the true Kobudo aspect um, on my channel, then please uh, make sure you stay tuned and to follow up on my journey. By understanding the Kobudo, I'll be able to better understand Karate and to better enhance it in the future. So please look forward to that. And I hope you guys liked today's um, historical video. And yeah, if you like it, please like it and subscribe to my channel. And I have more reaction videos and tutorial videos on my channel, so please check that out. And oh yeah, most importantly, I run an online group and private lesson of Karate. So if you'd like to train even in this pandemic years through a teacher like myself, then please check it out from here. And I'll see you guys in my next video.